we're developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. It's no longer a theory. German philosopher Johann von Goethe once said, There are none more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe that they are free. But few who hear the words ever realize that they are the ones to whom Goethe was referring. For the reality is that every person in the civilized world is enslaved from childhood. They are enslaved in a prison without walls or bars and so few ever realize it, but all are enslaved nonetheless. And what the people of the world are enslaved to is a system of perpetual self-generating debt that is created for them wholly by design by private international banking interests. And the people are taught from an early age to just accept this debt because this is just the way things are. But the reality is that this is not just the way things are, but more the way things have been designed. And all one has to do is to glance around them at the state of the world today to realize that though this is the way things currently are, it is most definitely not the way things should be. The most powerful and useful tool a person can ever gain in their life is knowledge. For with knowledge comes wisdom and a deeper understanding. And real truth can be exhilarating because real truth will set you free. Now whether you believe in the Illuminati or not, whether you take the time to listen to so-called conspiracy theories or not, there are some things that should be clearly understood by all. These are not conspiracy theories by any stretch of the imagination. They are well documented, quite traceable and very provable facts. And these facts are as follows. There is one ruling bloodline that exists on this earth. This ruling bloodline is very old. It is the same bloodline that has always ruled the earth ever since the days of ancient Egypt. And it is very pervasive. For example, Many people think that anyone can get to be President of the United States, but the reality is that all US Presidents have been Freemasons, and a large number of them are in fact related, and their lineage can be traced back to European monarchy, and in particular to the line of William of Orange. This elite bloodline can actually be traced back a good deal further than William of Orange, and even back as far as the royalty of ancient Egypt. And it's this very same bloodline that has ruled the earth ever since, and to which the British monarchy and the current US president can both ultimately be traced. Many people may be surprised to learn that US President George W. Bush is in fact the 13th cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, the current British monarch. Reverence for the royal bloodline and worship of Amun Ra is still carried out in the world today, though it is veiled and secretive, but the symbolism remains true, as always, hidden in plain view. Adherence to such traditions is why each of the three city-states of London, Vatican and the District of Columbia all have their own obelisks. The London obelisk is also accompanied by two sphinx wrought in the image of Cutmosis, indicating that it is in London that the royal bloodline actually resides. The fact that out of all the pharaohs to choose from, the London Sphinx depicts Tutmosis is actually very telling indeed for a number of reasons, but that is another tale. The British monarchy is steeped in ancient traditions and symbolism, and they do not attempt to hide these connections. They just don't mention them or answer questions about them, but the signs and symbols are right there for discerning eyes to clearly see, again, as always, hidden in plain view. 
Just a look at the royal coat of arms, the royal regalia and the coronation throne clearly demonstrates these connections. And the evidence linking these rulers to the one bloodline does exist. All the information to verify these claims lies within the public domain. It is up to each of you to connect the dots yourself. More importantly, however, is the fact that over the last 200 odd years there has developed behind this ruling bloodline another elite class, somewhat similar to a priesthood that remains hidden in the shadows. This shadowy priesthood is the money changers, the international banking elite, consisting of 13 very influential families, and it is this shadowy elite who ultimately controls things from behind the scenes. This control is achieved through covert manipulation of the global money systems and maintained through an intricate web of interconnected secret societies through which control over the flow of all money, all resources, all food and more importantly all information through manipulation of the world's educational institutions and corporate media is also achieved. Many of these smaller secret societies are completely oblivious to the existence of the others, but all lead back to a round table of just six, and ultimately to one at the very top that is populated by virtually a handful of individuals. It is this handful of very powerful men that controls all the other societies, and through them the heartbeat of the entire world. The society that sits at the very top was founded on Knights Templar traditions in Bavaria in 1776 by a man called Adam Weishaupt, and this is the Order of the Illuminati. The man who commissioned Weishaupt for the task was Mayor Amschel Rothschild, and it was done in order to carry out a plan conceived by Rothschild and the heads of 12 other families at a secret meeting that took place in 1773. These families included the Warburgs, the Schiffs and the Oppenheimers. The Illuminati has since become the most powerful society in the world, and in the last 230 years it has been instrumental in helping the Rothschild family accumulate over one half of the world's total wealth, at the cost of quite literally millions of innocent lives. The hoarded wealth of this one family alone could comfortably feed, clothe and house every man, every woman and every child on earth and this is just one of the 13 Illuminati families. The goal of the Illuminati has always been a simple one, and that is to achieve, by whatever means possible, total ownership and control over no less than every resource, every government, every rock, every drop of water, every blade of grass, and every living creature, both human and non-human, in the entire world. And since its inception, for over 230 years, the Order of the Illuminati has been tirelessly, relentlessly, and unfalteringly steering its members towards the achievement of that one ultimate goal. Through secrecy, they have so far been extremely successful in their endeavours. In fact, so much so that we are right now living in the time when they intend to see this long-spanned work come to fruition. The situation we are witnessing in the world right now is in fact the final endgame of the Illuminati. This is their big grab for ultimate power and mass depopulation. Some people claim that the Illuminati is a myth, and what is really to blame are organisations such as Zionism, but I assure you that this is not the case. It goes far deeper than Zionism, and such people have simply limited the scope of their vision. They have locked onto an answer that supports their beliefs and have refused to delve any deeper. They are not seeing the bigger picture. Greek philosopher Socrates once said that true wisdom is knowing how little we actually know, and he was absolutely correct, and this is why it is important to keep an open mind and allow your beliefs to be flexible enough to change as new knowledge is acquired. And it is important to listen to all the information, and not to just that which reinforces your beliefs, because this conspiracy goes very deep, and Zionism and the Jewish influence over the money system is merely one layer of it. It goes still deeper even than the Illuminati. Those who we know as the Illuminati are merely the shadowy controllers. The plan that is unfolding in the world today is indeed an old one, and it is a plan that is very complex, but not so with the system of control that is in place to blind the people to its existence. This system of control just appears to be complex, but in reality, it isn't. In reality, it's very simple, and it's very fragile. However, it is its apparent complexity that has kept it so well veiled, and it has also been kept very well hidden by constructing a conspiracy culture to breed around it, and by then promoting an air of endless ridicule towards such concepts. Indeed, the creation and proliferation of such a culture and promotion of constant ridicule towards it has been one of the Illuminati's most valuable assets in obscuring the reality of the society's existence. 
The entire Illuminati system is today operated by the Crown. And what is the Crown exactly? Well, contrary to popular belief, the Crown does not refer to the royal family or to the British monarchy, but to the inner city of London, which in actual fact is a privately owned corporation that functions as a completely separate sovereign state outside the jurisdiction of England, the same as its two sister city-states of Vatican and Washington's District of Columbia, all of which combine to form the empire of the three cities. Most people are completely unaware that when they swear allegiance to the Crown, they are actually swearing allegiance to this private corporate empire owned by the 13 Illuminati families. These are the very same private individuals who also indirectly own and operate the World Bank. And what does the World Bank do exactly? Well, apart from other things like control global oil prices, it lends money to whole countries by supplying each country's Federal Reserve Bank, and then it collects interest on these loans, which is paid by taxing the labour of the peoples of each country. Now let me just run that by you again so you clearly understand how this works. If you live in a country that has a Federal Reserve Bank, then the World Bank, a privately run company that is able to legally create money from thin air, is who supplies your country with money at interest and you as the individual is required to pay a tax on your labor to pay off the interest on the government's loan from this private bank. Many people are duped into believing that their taxes pay for infrastructure and without taxes there would be no roads and no schools and the country would fall apart. But this is completely untrue. The government has the legal right to coin its own money and control its value, but it does not. It borrows money from a private bank and uses this bank loan to pay for infrastructure and then you are taxed in order to pay off the interest on the loan. Interest which from a business perspective is pure profit for the international banksters. However you choose to look at things, one thing must be clearly understood, and that is that each person in the Western world who has a job is forced every year to give away approximately three months worth of wages in taxes, and that tax money goes directly into the pockets of the private individuals who own and run the World Bank. It's one big privately run scam. And if you ever allow yourself to be microchipped and cash money is abolished altogether, which is their plan, then all bills and all taxes will automatically be removed from your account when they are due, whether you actually owe the money or not. And if you complain about the system, well then they can simply turn off your chip. Since all commerce will centre around the chip, you will not be able to buy food or pay rent or do anything at all. And there will be absolutely nothing whatsoever that you can do about it. And that is their goal, to limit the size of the population on Earth and to microchip those that are left. And then it's game, set and match, and total control of the world and everyone in it will be in the hands of an international cartel of criminal banksters. This whole scam is being planned and carried out very methodically. It is these people and their minions and puppets who attend such gatherings as Bilderberg meetings and the Bohemian Grove Summer Festival, and who still adhere closely to the schools of ancient mystery, which many such as the late Bill Cooper have referred to as the ancient mystery religion. However, it is more a mechanism of control designed to reach an ultimate goal than a religion. Though steeped in ritual and what many would term black magic, it is simply a system the Illuminati system. And though its workings seem complex to the layman, in reality it's quite simple. And it's also very easy to see once one has acquired the correct manner of looking at things. And there is definite purpose and reason in the ritualistic nature of this system, in its use of numerology, symbolism and ritual. And all that is needed to realize this is a deeper understanding of the true nature of the universe and how we are all connected to it. However, this film directs its focus on the system itself and a key to the system functioning, which is through covert control of the money supply by very few people. It is crucial that people become aware of this issue because the methods by which society could free itself from this system of control are also very simple. Once a person has gained an understanding of the true realities of this world we live in, and this is not as difficult a task as you may at first think, because due to its complexities, the illusion the elite have created that most perceive as reality is a very fragile one. It is fragile because it is not reality. The reality is that the world does not have to be this way at all. It does not have to be heading in the direction that it is heading. People do not have to live in a never-ending sea of self-generating debt. Wars do not have to be fought and children do not have to starve. And don't think people starve because the world is overpopulated. Don't believe what the television tells you. The world isn't overpopulated at all. In fact, let's look at it realistically with a simple comparison of population versus land mass. And we could do a rough estimate and formulate a quick hypothetical to demonstrate this very easily. 
There are approximately 6 billion people in the world and there is 2.97 million square miles of land in the island continent of Australia. 2.97 million square miles breaks down to 1 billion 900 million 800 thousand acres which then converts down to 7 billion 603 million 200 thousand quarter acre blocks of land. So we could hypothetically give every person in the world a quarter acre block of land and they would all fit into an area the size of Australia. Each would have enough land that they could all have gardens and grow a substantial supply of their own food. And we would still have 1,603,200,000 quarter acre blocks or an area roughly half the size of Queensland left over, plus the entire rest of the world. Now just pause to let that sink into your brain for a second. All the people, that's every man, woman and child on earth, would comfortably fit inside Australia. Each individual person could have a quarter acre block of land and we would still have half of Queensland and the entire rest of the planet left unoccupied. The world is not overpopulated at all, it is just very badly managed and you need have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that this bad management is intentional and it is methodical. It would however be very simple to fix things and all that is required is for people to wake up to how much they are being lied to and how much they are being scammed and this goes for everyone. People really need to gain an understanding of how this system actually works because this bad management is crippling the world and it is crippling the people. The methods that are used to do this become truly transparent once a person has gained a clear enough vision to see it and people really do need to open their eyes and see it right now because now that the world has been made smaller and now that all the resources have been discovered and there are no frontiers left to conquer, the criminal elite intend to carry out a mass depopulation of this world and their plan to do this is well underway. They are doing it in the Middle East with war, in countries such as Africa through starvation, and now in Western countries through water additives, aerial spraying, and through the introduction of toxic and nutrient deficient genetically modified foods. And this is very soon to be taken to the next level with the global introduction of Codex Alimentarius, an insidious set of food guidelines that are due to come into effect worldwide on December 31st, 2009. But people are now beginning to wake up and realize that all is not right and they are beginning to speak out. The police need to understand this situation and take action to address these matters as well. And this is very important. And there is no reason why the police should act against the people who are waking up and speaking out against this corrupt system. For the police are also being scammed just as badly and in some ways even worse than everybody else. Worse because it is the police who are being coerced and tricked into defending this elitist corruption by puppet governments put in place by banksters who coerce these officers into compliance by adding creative names to such public awakenings such as social unrest or civil disobedience and by instilling a robot-like adherence to authority within the minds of police officers rather than a strong set of moral values. The police in these cases should stand by the people they are sworn to protect not blindly follow instructions given to them by criminal elites. The police need to realize that they too are the people and they are being stolen from and used just as well. And the way to beat this system is for the people, the police and everybody else to simply stop agreeing with it. And also the politicians who bow to these corrupt money cartels and enact these ridiculous pieces of legislation. These politicians need to seriously think about what they are doing. They need to realize that these money cartels don't care about them or their families. These politicians have children and grandchildren who are also going to have to live in this world that is being created. And don't kid yourself that there's a politician in a position of power somewhere who isn't a puppet. All are puppets of the money cartels without exception. These people may well have been voted into power, but the voting process is simply theater for the masses to promote the illusion of people's choice. The people may vote for one particular candidate over another, but they do not get to actually decide who these candidates will be to begin with. The people of the world need to realize their own potential and wake up from the dream that they are living in. Forget what you are told and trained to do by the TV because it's a lie. TV is there to train people what to think and how to act. End of list. It is nothing more than a tool of propaganda that has successfully brainwashed 95% of the Western world by feeding people manufactured news, disinformation and giving people an utterly false perception of the world and of their relationship to each other. Turn your TV off and leave it off. After even a month of no TV, you'll be surprised at how much better and how much healthier you feel.
It needs to be clearly understood by people everywhere that the elite only have the power over the people that the people themselves grant to them. So stop giving it to them. Stop doing what the TV tells you and stop complying with the system. Understand that there truly is no division among the people of the world. No matter who they are or where they are from, we are all people and we are all one. It is true the constantly promoted illusion of division that the system is able to function, but in order for it to do so, it needs public compliance. Stop complying and you will shut the system down. You will shut it down completely, because if people stop complying, it will simply implode. It will collapse like a house of cars, and all it would take for this to occur is global awareness of how it really works. We have reached a turning point in history, and the veil of secrecy that has always surrounded the Illuminati system is now at last being lifted. Now is the time for the people of the world to look after each other, and not the system. It really is that simple, and the world is almost on the verge of that happening now, because a new awareness is growing amongst the people. More and more are waking up every day, and they are spreading the word, as we all should do, as loudly as we can, because the masses who are still sleeping really must be woken up to what is occurring. There is quite literally nothing more important than this issue. And the plan goes even deeper than the international money cartels. There truly are deep and dark forces at work controlling things here, but it is true the manipulation of the money system that global control is maintained, and it is that system that must first be addressed. It's all very well for us to talk about all of this stuff, and to continue learning and gathering more information about it, but the time for merely gathering information is now past. What is needed now is action, and it is needed very quickly because the prison door is swinging shut. Please understand that these people plan on depopulating at least 80% of the world, and that most likely includes you. This is not a joke, and this is not some wild conspiracy theory, it is the absolute truth, and this matter seriously needs to be addressed. All the information on how they intend to do this is available in the public domain, though of course you are not hearing it reported by the mainstream media, because the money cartels own the mainstream media. A great deal of information regarding this is posted on my YouTube channel, and I highly recommend that you view it and distribute it to as many people as you are able to because the time for talk really is over. What is truly needed at this time is for the good people of the world to act and to act now. The key is in love and unity amongst all mankind because it matters not who you are, what country you are in, or where you are from. It makes no difference whether you are black or white or Christian or Muslim or Jew. It makes no difference at all what your beliefs are because the prison that is being constructed affects every one of us equally. The world that we are allowing to be created for our children to live in is a world that will not be worth living in. And if we just allow the situation to continue along its current path, then we are condemning our descendants to a hell on earth. But we are many, and they are few, and it simply must not be allowed to occur. It is time for the people of the world to stop and realize that the divisions that supposedly exist amongst us are an illusion. There is no division. It's time for everybody to understand the truth of this. It's time to approach the world and each other in a state of love rather than in a state of fear. It's time for you to tap into the source and realize your own potential. And it's time for us all to collectively stand together and address the root cause of the problem. And all of you need to spread this information. It's very important that you do. Burn DVDs and hand them out to people. Bring the conversation up at every opportunity. This issue is too important to ignore. And if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. There's simply no middle ground here. Bring all the truth factions of the world together under one banner, the banner of human unity. Set aside your differences and work out the finer details later. Regardless of who or what is the ultimate intelligence behind this plan for global control, everyone needs to understand clearly that the fascist new world order that is being introduced and the mass depopulation that is occurring across the globe is being implemented by the criminal banking elite. The money system is the head of the snake. Cut the head off the snake and the rest will wither and die. The time for talk is over and the time for action has come. It's now time for the people of the world to stop complying with the system. Everyone, stop complying with it and you will shut it down. And the best form of non-compliance is love. Approach every issue with love, rather than obediently following orders given to you by a commanding officer, and rather doing what is right for you personally, do what is actually right. And if a leader wants to send you to war, say, no sir, I won't murder other people's children for you anymore, you'll have to go and do it yourself.
You will be called a coward by the military, but such is not the case, because it's much easier to fight for principles than to live up to them, and it takes a far braver man to stand up for what is right and spit in the face of authority than it does to blindly follow orders due to fear of the consequences. Understand that we are all one, and the key to real change and unity in this world lies with love. There need be no violence, no guns, no banners, no slogans, no groupthink, just a united act of global non-compliance. Non-compliance for anything in conflict with the directives outlined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights would be a good start. Simply stop giving these people the power to control you. Understand that the only power they have is the power that the people give them. Understand that injustice towards one is injustice towards all. Injustice towards him is injustice against you and there should be no grey area in your mind in regards to that. Everyone needs to stop going along with it and it needs to be done immediately. It's time to cut the head off the snake. The revolution is not coming. The revolution is now.